Old Manor, Part 1 The Vampire Jack Townsend Your journey has been so long, you've crossed the haunted veil seeking an end to questions with no logical answers. They told you stories, the townsfolk, just before the ascent of the dense foliage. You will find only death if you cross into that forest, and the one who courts it. Even so, you pressed on. The bones of the forest welcomed you with open arms, like a mother's embrace into a long-forgotten womb, the gnarled branches clinging to your clothing as if begging, You leave what scraps are claimed by the long dead hollow and emerge, only to see the focus of your hard work, the manor, a sprawling monstrosity of a building, each angle a dagger stabbing skyward, as if mocking the heavens in protest. Tripping towards the massive gates, you find they open easily, no noticeable opposition from anything nasty. And so, you press on, tiptoeing your way against the mangled cobblestone beneath your feet. There, there it is. There is what you wished for, an answer to this long-awaited riddle in your mind with no punchline, a door meant for what seems to be giants. Your hand reaches forward to marry Knuckle with wood, one, two, three, and the air grows still. The chirping of birds you swore had circled near, all gone. The wind that ripped against your soft and prickled flesh ceased. The energy gone cold. As your fingertips trail downwards, the door creaks open. Good evening. A soft voice coos from the darkness just beyond your eyes' ability to fathom. Can I help you? You explain your plight, make up something foolish, that you're just a lost lamb and need shelter, hoping that this thing doesn't see you on this mission of personal discovery to shed a light to this darkness you begged you would find. Poor, poor little creature, lost in the cold and dark. Come inside. You will be well taken care of. And so you do, following the twisted talon that extends a singular digit to guide you into the maw of that gothic hearth. As you enter, it is easily seen. This place is far from empty. On the outside, it seemed cold, void of life. While inside, there are things shuffling about in the shadows. Eyes glow as they land upon you. The unease causing you to quickly crane your neck out of their peripheral, even. Monsters are real, and you've stumbled into a den of them. Never mind my tenants. Keep your eyes forward. We'll find you some warm clothes and something for you to eat. You mind the tall monster's words, keeping your gaze fixed upon him. It? You're not sure. Long ribbon hair spirals from the top of his cranium before splashing against his shoulders and down his back, his coat a deep crimson, almost appearing stained with blood in totality. His boots click against the marbled floor, and his hands that dangle as he looms, adorned with pulsing gems and jewels too strange to decipher upon a glance. Rest here. He points to a large chair as you realize you've entered another room without noticing, your view taking in the large fireplace and the single seat just before it. I'll return before you know. Just don't wander off. You sit, a blanket upon the armrest, a perfect companion as you grip tightly and wrap yourself within. 
and for a moment, there is a deep peace that takes you. It's almost like your home. This familiarity, it's strange to you. As if you've been in this very seat before. Have you? No. It can't be. This monster must have you under some sort of spell. And your heart leaps from your chest, pounding as you realize the fear that suddenly grips you. The den of monsters. Peaceful, tranquil even. Unlikely. You may have stumbled upon this place, but it was time for you to leave. But how? You had to find a way. Surely if you enter the way you came, the other devils will see you. You slip from your seat, tossing the kindly place blanket back to the chair and dart for the nearest door. It rattles, locked. You release the knob and head for the next, and you find it much the same. There, a path just beyond heading upstairs, but it must be your best bet. So you rush past the old paintings and neatly set table, the smells and scents of whatever was prepared filling your nostrils. No, another trick. Surely another way to keep you here. Your feet collide with the carpeted steps as you surge upon them and around the narrow hallway. Thump, 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 thump. Your heart explodes within the foundries of your ribcage as this terror fills you. The cortisol rising as your hands rest upon the nearby wall to allow a momentary rest from that uphill ascent. Always upwards, never down. What is happening? Pushing yourself from that reprieve, you allow yourself to erupt into motion yet again, the carpet pulling from the soles of your shoes as you move your way through the tight space. As you do so, the light dims and vanishes as if a gust of wind blows throughout the manor. Yet there seems to be nothing. Silence. Another door, however, emerges, and as you open it, yes, this one leads downwards. A possible escape from this place. You practically trip down the stairs as you rush to the bottom. Is it freedom? Is it your glorious return to those overcast skies and that forest that welcomed you so quickly? No. A single chair sits near a desk. Upon it, something strange. You saunter over to allow your wiggling digits to reach, reach, to take grasp of what it could be. A journal with the name A. Lamont. I have offered you sanctuary. The man appears, darkness swirling about his features. I offered you kindness! He's upon you. Talon clutching your throat as you find yourself pinned to the wall, his strength inhuman. <laughs> this is how you repay me, by stealing into my sacred places when I told you to stay in the comfort of that chair. Was a warmth of the fire I'd made not enough? Was a food I and my servants prepared not appetizing? You squirm, begging for release, begging for some way to escape. I watched you from that tower, helpless. I saw your misfortune and prepared this for you. Yet you run. You see us as monsters. Yet who is the monster now? You lock eyes with the beam. His fangs bared, eyes blackened as the red and orange orbs burn through the darkness like a knife through butter. You laid your hands upon my journal and spat at my hospitality. Now you may never leave. You scream out as you watch his head surge forward, those fangs sinking deep into your neck, the blood in your veins serving as payment for your rudeness. Overwhelming darkness takes you and you slip as you wonder what will become of you in this place.